Papa told me to introduce each man before they come. The first man we'll have is Brother Johnny Nix Jr. He's the pastor here at Way of the Cross Baptist Church. Him and Papa go a long way back. Well, it's my honor and privilege to be able to stand here today and to say something about a man that's been a friend to so many of us. He told me, he said, don't spend a whole lot of time talking about me. You tell them about the Lord Amen. that I'm serving. Yes. Brother Ed got saved. And as a result, later, his brother Bobby had come to the Lord. And Bobby was preaching in a storefront building in Dalton, Georgia, when my mother and daddy walked in. Amen. My daddy was so angry that Sunday, he didn't know he would go back the next Sunday, but he did. And God saved he and my mother that Sunday morning. Sometimes you don't know who's behind you when you're walking and living for the Lord. I share a privilege as well to have followed Brother Ed's brother, Brother Bobby, after 24 years of ministry in this church. Brother Ed played a great role in this church being formed and in existence as well as many other churches. He's a great man of God and I want to speak in his behalf today and just try to glorify the Lord by drawing your attention to John chapter 1 in verse number 6 where the Bible said there was a man sent from God. John the Baptist is probably one of the most unique individuals in the New Testament. He was prophesied in the book of Malachi that one would come in the spirit of Elijah. When John the Baptist come on the scene, it was Katie bar the door, walking out of the wilderness crying. And I seem to see Ed Ballou in that light, coming out of a wilderness area, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus. I want to say something about Dr. Ed Ballou as being one of God's choice servants. There are many preachers, and then there are preachers, preachers. And Ed Ballou was one of God's choice servants like John the Baptist. He had dual calls. John the Baptist was both a Nazarite and a priest. It put him in a department like no other. Ed Ballou was of a special breed of men. Amen. Only Samuel and Samson could boast of what John the Baptist could boast of as being a Nazarite under God. And what I'm simply saying to you today about Dr. Ed Ballou was he was a man of a different breed. He was cut out of a different mold. His life and all that God did in it shaped him as to who he was. And like a Nazarite, he laid his appetite on the altar to God. He gave God everything that he had and desired to live for God with all of his life. He laid his affections on the altar for God. John the Baptist as a priest could not touch that dead body for fear that he would defile his cleansing. Even if it was the closest relative, I remember the words of the Lord Jesus when he said, in order to love me, you have to hate your mother and your father and your sister and brother. In other words, a love for God must be paramount above all others. He proved that about every day of his life as a preacher and evangelist. He left out on Monday mornings many times to start a revival and would drag in on Friday and Saturday to pack his clothes and start over and do it again. I was listening to an old recording last night, nine out of 12 months. He said, I'm gone from home, giving myself to the ministry and the work of God. That was Ed Ballou's life. It takes a special breed of man to live in motel rooms and spend his life encouraging churches and people that are outside of the household of faith. But he laid all of his affections on the altar and found God's love paramount above the love of family, the love of friends, and the love of anything that is normal. 
What I'm saying to you is not only his appetite was on the altar, his affections on the altar, but his all was on the altar. He laid everything before God. The Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. But it suggests that he was sent from God and in doing so, it meant that his body was under subjection. That he must have also first been with God before he could ever be sent from God. One writer says that that word sent from God means literally he was sent from the very side of God. In other words, he was spent before he was sent. He was emptied out before God ever filled him up. And God set him apart and sanctified him for his service and impressed him in such a way that very few people ever impressed Brother Ed Ballou like God did. He was of a different breed. He was of a discerning behavior. Ed Ballou didn't jump on everybody's bandwagon. He didn't click with somebody's camp and he didn't hobby horse on heresy. I'm simply saying to you he had a mission and his mission was a message and his message was the gospel and it became the primary focus of his life and I know you've heard it before but it's his words lest I hinder the gospel. He didn't want to get in the way of the gospel. He had a discerning spirit. Like the priest John the Baptist, he was professionally consecrated. His calling, he understood, required character and he lived it to the highest degree. Amen. We're not saying that Ed Ballou was a perfect man, but he was a godly man and a man of faith. Amen. And every time you mentioned his name, you didn't have to hang your head in shame because his testimony was clean and pure before God. That can't be said of everybody. He was a man that was personally convicted of God like John the Baptist, a Nazarite, set apart for the service of God. I'm convinced that God never calls a man or a preacher to clean up all of the dirty people in this world, but rather to clean himself up so that all the dirty people can find their way to God. And Ed spent more time preaching the gospel and pointing to the Savior and emphasizing the power of the cross than he did any other thing. What I'm saying to you, he was personally convicted about the matter of the gospel and sharing it with all the world. John the Baptist was powerfully commended. What an honor for all of these men to sit behind us and these men to stay upon this platform as a testament to the man and the life that he lived. But the greatest commendation comes from the Lord Jesus of his servant. Ed Ballou was a man that I believe was commended by the Lord. It's been said of John the Baptist, by the Lord Jesus, not a man born of woman greater than John. But I want to add there's not been a man born of woman like Ed Ballou. Not one before and... Not one again. What a man. He was a man of divine benevolence. He was a giver instead of a taker. He loved people. He said to me, and I repeat it again, don't spend all your time talking about it. Give God the glory. I want to say a man of divine benevolence gives the Lord the glory for all that he is. Ed did that. He not only gave God the glory, he gave Lucifer grief. Listen to what he said in one of his books. He said to his reader, some of you have been saved for years and the devil doesn't even know about it. He said, I want to be on the devil's most hated list. When somebody mentions the name Ed Ballou to the devil, I want the devil to say, I'll have two alka seltzers, please. He said right before he died, I think the happiest day in the devil's, in the life of Ed Ballou is when the devil finds out that I'm dead. 
But he also said these words, repeating Moody, the great preacher. When somebody tells you Ed Ballou is dead, don't believe a word of it. He gave the devil grief, didn't he? He was a great soldier. He was a hero. He was a man of faith. He offered like Abel. He walked with God like Enoch. He preached like Noah. He blessed like Jacob. He was a patriarch to his family like Abraham. He stood at the prison gates like Moses and stared at the, like Moses stared at the Red Sea and cried out, "Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." And as the prison gates opened, just like the Red Sea did, God opened the doors of the Rock of Ages prison ministry.